I'm supposed to talk about Libya and Iran in five minutes. <laughs> um, one of the things we really wanted to get across with this forum today is how much money really goes for war from our tax dollars and what that money could do here in this country if it was kept here, not to mention help other people around the world. So um, I want to cut into my Libya and Iran time just a smidge to point out that we're told that the defense budget takes up what they call the defense budget. You know, it used to be called the Department of War, and then they changed it to the Department of Defense. Sure, go for it, yeah. And, and uh, they tell us it takes up about uh, 25 cents of every federal tax dollar. Do you know that nuclear weapons do not come under the Department of Defense? That's the Department of Energy. The nuclear weapons are not counted as part of the defense budget. They're counted under the Department of Energy. The <laughs> Veterans uh, Affairs is a separate issue. ROTC is a separate issue. So many things that go to support the military are not counted as military from the military budget, including the money to pay for the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. That's a separate appropriation, separate from the military budget. And then the almost as great as that 25% that they say is in the military budget is the money that is spent to pay for the interest on the national debt, the vast majority of which was money borrowed to support wars. So the War Resisters League, which has been around for about 90 years now, uh, estimates that about half of every federal dollar actually goes to the military or military-related activities. Now way back in about 1911-1912, a guy named Winston Churchill was made head of the Navy in, uh, in England, the United Kingdom. And one of the things he did was he changed the British Navy over from coal-operated ships to oil-operated ships. This was the first time that it had been done. People were aware that oil was in the world and it could be you know, a useful resource. But it was not considered the kind of fabulously wealthy resource it is today. But once he changed over the British Navy to an oil field navy, they found out that it was much faster and more efficient and far more powerful than any of the other navies in the world. And then, of course, England was the first industrial country, and industry depends on the oil to function, which they moved away from coal-fueled uh, uh, steam engines and water-fueled uh, steam engines. They went to go to oil. They could grow exponentially. So oil became the most valuable quantity in the world. And two-thirds of the world's known oil resources are in the Middle East, which is why half of all U.S. foreign aid is given to, number one, Israel, the biggest recipient of U.S. foreign aid. And when I say foreign aid, I don't mean giving it to the people. I mean giving it to the government so they can maintain control. Over $3 billion a year to Israel, and the second largest amount has been given to Egypt to support Hosni Mubarak. Now, Washington is claiming that they're so glad that this terrible dictator is gone and they want to join the Egyptian people to create democracy and so on. But they supported this guy for 30 years. And it was the second largest recipient. Why? Because Egypt was the first Arab country to sign a peace treaty with Israel. So that was their strategy. Israel is the of uh, land-based uh, military base for the United States and the Middle East, and Egypt was the closest ally. So all this money is pouring into it. The, the Sixth Fleet out of Norfolk, in and out and in and out of the Mediterranean and the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf, and, and all of that burning oil. The Fifth Fleet out of Bahrain, uh, U.S. forces stationed in virtually every Arab country in the region. One trillion dollars spent on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan alone since 2001. One trillion dollars. Thirty billion dollars from Virginia taxpayers. In Wisconsin, 18 billion dollars, which is four times the state budget deficit that Governor Scott Walker says the reasons why he's trying to break the unions in Wisconsin. Are the money that should be here for jobs, education, housing, health care, is being spent to, to further the profits of U.S. oil companies and related companies like Halliburton and Garner and so on all over the world. Now, Dr. Saini, fortunately for me, already went over some of the history of Iran. 
so i don't have to go there except to say that iran is one country that i do know something about i also have to speak on north korea, cuba and and libya later um but iran is a country that i've been to several times that i spent four or five years now studying and i know that virtually every single charge made against iran is a lie and if you want to pick up a copy of the book in defense of Iran, notes from a U.S. peace delegation's journey to the Islamic Republic, normally $15, we're making it available here for 10, and all proceeds go to support our all-volunteer newspaper. Libya, I'm just going to finish up with Libya, because Libya is in the news now. You know that the United Nations just passed the resolution that uh, authorizes the setting up of a so-called no-fly zone in Libya. And there's a phony meeting of uh, Arab states and European states meeting in, uh, in Europe in, uh, to uh, figure out how to carry this out practically. And Washington is saying, oh, we're going to help a little bit here and there, but we're not going to take charge. We're not going to be the one. No troops on the ground and so on. Not one of these countries can operate without the United States uh, approval and, and, and go ahead. Gaddafi is not the same as Hosni Babar. He's not the same as the king of, of Tunisia. He's not the same as the monarchy of Bahrain. He has a long history of standing up to the United States, erratically, not consistently, back and forth, with compromises. But he's not someone they want to see stay in power. And so they have long relationships with the opposition uh, opposing Gaddafi. And we need to be very, very skeptical of what's going on that today. The rule of thumb is, if Washington supports a democracy movement, be careful. Be very careful. And if they demonize a government overseas, be very careful. They can't demonize someone like Fidel Castro and then use the same words against someone else and have that same person be a dictator, a brutal uh, authoritarian tyrant. It doesn't work that way. So I'm not going to pretend I'm, I know all about Libya, but I know how much they lied about Iran. And so I'm not going to get taken in by the next time they tell me who my new enemy is. So finish there, but uh, please um, stay for the, the whole the whole uh, program today. It gets better and better as you go along. Thanks.